comic book games have been around for a very long time. It seems like the desire to play out our fantasies as superheroes in a visceral way is something people have always wanted to do. Whether it's punching dudes, blowing things up with crazy powers, or exploring interesting worlds with unique movement controls, video games seem like the perfect fit for replicating what our imaginations tell us what being a superhero must feel like. Having loved Spider-Man since the original 90s animated series, I was always excited to try the new Spider-Man game on the block, starting with that awesome PS1 title all those years ago. Arguably the most defining aspect of almost all Spider-Man games, and Spidey in general, has to be his web-swinging. It's not a stretch to say that this is his most iconic talent, which has no doubt required game designers to think outside the box in order to adapt faithfully. Rather than just being able to fly like Superman, drive around in sick vehicles like Batman, Spider-Man's web-swinging is akin to a contemporary Tarzan in his own concrete jungle of New York something that isn't easy to translate well in a mechanical sense. The game that is getting the most attention nowadays when talking about web-swinging is Marvel's Spider-Man for the PS4 by the devs over at Insomniac Games, the same people responsible for the awesome Sunset Overdrive, which I also covered quite recently. So, we have a big-name developer that already cut its teeth on a game known for unique and fun traversal, and both games are even running on the same engine. This should mean that Marvel's Spider-Man absolutely nails its web-swinging, doesn't it? Well, the answer isn't so cut and dry. On one hand, yeah, this game does provide a very impressive experience with its web-swinging, but not really in terms of mechanics, but rather through how it feels. Uh, IGN joke, check. When looking at the basic swinging, from the animation to the sense of speed and the tension of going in a pendulum motion, it all feels really good. You can almost quantify the amount of money that was poured into this game in relation to how polished it is, just so it would feel this good. It's nuts. That said, there's not a whole lot to it since the swinging itself is really basic, for lack of a better term. You could get by just holding the R2 button and go where you need to be. That's not to say there isn't more to it, there's still wall running, catapulting, and charge jumping, but all in all, it's still very simplistic in terms of what the player has to physically do in order to make it work. The only mechanics with any sense of depth have to be the web zip in combination with point launching. The web zip is when Spidey shoots out two webs straight ahead in order to pull himself forward for faster movement. Point launching is when landing on something like a pole, the edge of a building, or anything that shows the circle indicator on the screen and then pressing X at just the right time to see Spidey jump off of it with a lot of intensity and speed to continue the momentum, which is often done in conjunction with a web zip. While the timing can be somewhat tricky at first to get right, it honestly doesn't take too long to get it down. What disappoints about the zip-to-point combo is that it's basically the fastest way to traverse the map, with its speed towering over that of standard swinging. This really downplays the actual swinging, the biggest merit to swinging is the eye candy that comes with it. Granted, it's the most delicious candy on the market, but with zip-to-point being just so much faster, why should I even bother swinging? I was initially hoping for a skill ceiling akin to something like Ultimate Spider-Man where it takes, you know, actual skill to traverse the map. But here you can easily go from one end of it to the other by basically just holding forward and R2. Of course, it should be noted that this isn't necessarily a bad thing. The game's accessibility allows for most players to get into the flow of the game really easily and have fun straight away expanding its potential audience to anyone who can hold just two buttons, which is most of everyone. There's definitely merit to its simplicity, but at the same time, players that want a deeper, more gameplay-driven web-swinging system will come away disappointed by just how low the skill ceiling is. Or so I've been told because I've never played Spider-Man PS4. I don't even own a PS4 to play it on. That entire part of the script was, in fact, written and edited by Daniel Santos, who is a good friend and frequent collaborator of mine. Hmm, yeah, that's about right.
Spider-Man Web of Shadows, released in 2008, was developed by Shaba Games in conjunction with Treyarch. It isn't the most popular Spidey title out there. The reviews for it were lukewarm, with most of the praise going towards its combat. Critics were left disappointed with the overall repetitiveness of the game, most of which entails go to place and defeat X number of goons, but as you might have guessed, we're not talking about the combat today, but rather the traversal, and why I think this game has the best web-swinging of any Spider-Man title. The foundation of the swinging in Web of Shadows is built on the combination of core mechanics and contextual actions. Let's run through those real quick. The core mechanics here are very similar to those to this game's predecessor, Ultimate Spider-Man, but with changes to their moment-to-moment -moment utility. You have the ability to jump and double jump, which evens out your flight trajectory at high speeds. You can initiate and end a swing by pressing and holding the swing button. By tapping the swing button instead of holding it, you can web zip, which is a good way to change directions at a moment's notice or make a steady diagonal climb at lower speeds. Carrying over from Ultimate Spider-Man, you have the web climb. Holding the button while swinging will have Spidey climb the web, although aside from very early game occasions, it's not nearly as useful as in Ultimate. If you hold the web climb button when near a lamppost or a flagpost, you will have Spidey grab it and swing around, although the utility of this is diminished as you increase your swing speed. Using the same button when near a wall will have Spidey start a wall run along it, which then has its own follow-ups I'll cover in a bit. There's an air dash that helps you control your vertical velocity if it gets a bit too hectic, as well as give you a little forwards and upwards boost. Arguably the most versatile tool in Spider-Man's kit, however, is a move called Web Boost. If you hold the jump button while swinging, you will receive a speed boost that will result in a faster swing and increase your momentum after letting go of the web. <sighs> okay, that's part one done. Onwards to part two. There are a myriad of contextual actions you have access to in the right conditions. If you keep the stick in a neutral position and try to web zip, you will zip upwards, which is the easiest way to rapidly gain height. If you attempt a web zip while you're wall running, Spidey will zip forwards, giving you a considerable speed boost. This is doable both vertically and horizontally. You can also jump out of a wall run that has this awesome spinning animation, or you could alternatively start a swing right from the wall itself. There is a manual wall run that is done by holding the stick towards a wall and not pressing the wall run button, which you can jump out of for extra style points. If you attempt a jump right before making contact with the wall, you'll jump off and carry the momentum you had with a little extra to boot, and jumping right as you make contact with the ground will result in a higher jump that carries some inertia. I think that was all of them. Now that you're armed with the knowledge of the ins and outs of the swinging systems in Web of Shadows, it's time for me to prove why I think this is better than this. The answer to that question is quite simple, actually. When you start the game, the swinging is... Eh, okay at best. It's not fast or challenging enough to be fun. Across Manhattan, there's spider emblems scattered throughout, which will increase your swing speed the more you collect. They respawn every time you reach a new level, which makes collecting them convenient, as well as rewarding, with level 10 being the max. Once you cap your swing speed, that's where the game really opens up. Swings become sporadic and unexpected. Since you can only swing if you're in the vicinity of a building, you have to plan your swinging arc on the move, and at speeds like this, it can get pretty fucking hectic. A good way of building speed early on are short swings. They give you plenty of acceleration, but shoot a web too late and you'll catapult upwards, leaving you way above buildings, completely breaking your flow. Pairing short swings with split-second boosts results in these rapid-fire web shots that have you fly between skyscrapers at breakneck speeds, and seeing how long you can keep them up is cathartic as hell. All of this is without utilizing the tricks you can pull off in between swings, Cap off your swing with a wall run and zip off to keep going. Shimmy along the building and jump off. Follow a series of rapid swings with a big one to slingshot yourself and dash in midair to cut short the vertical climb and keep going. There's a multitude of moves available to you at any time, giving you the tools to express yourself through how you swing. Be it long, patient swings that end with massive airtime or short, rapid-fire bursts that zip you between and around buildings, the latter being my preferred method. 
The thing with this game is that it doesn't give you a button that does everything while you sit back and enjoy the show. It makes you approach its mechanics on its own terms, not yours. It forces you to learn from your mistakes to master the basics alone, but if you invest the time to master the ins and outs of how this game works, it'll reward you more than any Spider-Man game out there. Spider-Man Web of Shadows is a deeply flawed title with repetitive mission design, clunky combat, and plenty of framerate issues, yet it provides a traversal system more engaging, cathartic, and satisfying than any game I've ever played. This was Atmos, and thanks for stopping by.